Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the world's first Ryzen powered tablet. Now this is coming to us from Menace Forum. It's known as the V3. And if you're familiar with this, you know that I've created one video already. It was kind of a first look video. And in that one, I did state that this is one of the best Windows tablets that I've ever tested. I'm not a huge fan of Windows tablets in the first place, but this has really changed my mind about them. And yeah, this is the best Windows tablet I've ever had my hands on. It's definitely not perfect, and there's a couple things I'd like to see change down the road, but overall, this thing is putting down some really great performance, and it comes down to a few different things. Obviously, it's a Ryzen-powered tablet, but with this, we get the new AMD Ryzen 7 8840U. 8 Zen 4 cores, 16 threads, and RDNA 3 graphics. So you know, we've got a really good performing setup here, and you can actually play AAA games on this thing. Now, one thing that's always kind of turned me off about other tablets that I've tested is the screen. But I think Menace Forum has went above and beyond with this one because what we get here is a 14 inch 2560 by 1600 IPS display with some really vivid colors, a refresh rate of up to 165 Hertz, and it supports VRR, variable refresh rate or free sync given that we're using an AMD chip here. It's a 16 by 10 display, native landscape, and they've added some configurations here to actually allow us to use any of the resolutions from 16 by 10 up to 2560 by 1600 and even 16 by 9 aspect ratio resolutions, which will help out with apps that just don't scale properly to 16 by 10 screens. Of course, like a lot of other manufacturers who create these Windows tablets, there are extra accessories like a detachable keyboard, we've got a magnetically detachable rear stand, and even an active pen. We will be testing this out in the video, so keep an eye out for my super awesome art skills. But I do want to move into the specs, just give you a quick refresher. One of the main claim to fames here is this is an AMD powered unit, so we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 8840U. 8 cores, 16 threads, it's all based on Zen 4. We also get the Radeon 780M iGPU based on RDNA 3, 12 compute units, and this will clock up to 2700 MHz. Ryzen AI with these newer chips, and it's a bit more powerful than Ryzen 7000. So the Ryzen AI NPU can do up to 16 tops of AI performance, but in total, using the iGPU, CPU, and NPU, up to 38 tops. This unit has 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM running at 6400 MHz, and I'm not sure if they're going to be offering a 64 model or even a 16. This is the one that they sent over for review. It supports an M.2 2280 SSD up to 2 terabytes. A 14 inch, 165 hertz, free sync, glare free IPS display. We've got a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It's 100% P3 and up to 500 nits of brightness. Built in quad speaker setup, so we've got dual speakers on each side. It's got a 50.82 watt hour battery with 65 watt fast charging, and this is running Windows 11 Pro. In this video, I'm going to be going over a lot of stuff from battery life, performance, benchmarks. We're going to test out that active pen. But the first thing I wanted to talk about were some changes I'd like to see down the road. Taking a look at the back cover slash stand, originally in my first look video, I wasn't aware that the bottom of this also had built-in magnets. So I was kind of folding it out from the bottom as the stand, and as you can see, this will block the vents. Basically, all I had to do was fold the top down, so that's how this one's going to work. But it would still be really nice if we had a built-in stand on the back of this tablet. Something similar to the fold-out stand on the Microsoft Surface tablets would be really cool. Now, once everything's attached, it definitely looks really nice. All the air is drawn in from the rear, but since I've got that cover on it, it's going to block it. It'll push it up out of the top. They're using their new cooling system. Four heat pipes, two fans. And of course, we've got that detachable keyboard with a really nice trackpad. I actually like the feel of these buttons. We'll take a closer look in a second, but the first thing I wanted to jump into here was the BIOS. I've had a few people asking about this. It is using Menace Forum's new visual BIOS, but it doesn't support touch screen, so you will need a keyboard connected. You could use a USB keyboard, wired or wireless. But getting in here, really easy. Once you got that keyboard connected, just press delete while it's booting up. We'll go ahead and navigate with the arrow keys. And we've basically got most of the stuff we need here unlocked. Checking out the advanced section, uh, PSS and NX support or NX mode can be enabled or disabled. But going all the way down to the bottom here to AMD CBS is where we can actually do a little bit of performance tweaking. Core performance boost, you can totally disable it from the BIOS. We can also dedicate some VRAM. I've gone in and set up to six gigs since I've got a 32 gigabyte model. That's more than enough for this iGPU, but keep in mind it will automatically allocate it as it's needed. It's not totally necessary. 
From SMU Common Options, we've got our system configuration. So out of the box, this will run it up to 28 watts. With the cooling system, 28 watts is really great. It's set to auto, and we do have some software here from Windows that'll allow us to adjust the TDP. But yeah, really nice to see that we've got a lot of options here in the BIOS. Next thing I wanted to give you a look at was the detachable keyboard. Really nice trackpad with multi-gesture support. The keys on the board itself actually feel pretty nice. They've got a little bit of throw to them. And uh, yeah, you can navigate the tablet no problem at all with this keyboard. And it also has the new Microsoft Copilot key. Easy access to Copilot. You've got that AI assistant built in with Windows 11. And you know, if you're not into this, I completely understand. But I did want to generate an image at least. I think that's what this is really good for. So we're going to go with Godzilla as a kitten. And there you have it. We've got four AI generated images of Godzilla as a cat. And I think this is exactly why Copilot exists. So I just went ahead and plugged this into a capture device so we could get a better look at everything. And I mean, it's a very snappy system. We've got that 8840U browsing the web at lower wattages is perfectly fine. You're not gonna run into any issues. You can run 4K videos on this just fine. I think 1440p would be a nice sweet spot given the screen's resolution. But uh, one thing we've got here from Minus Forum is Minus Forum Space. This is gonna allow us to adjust everything on this tablet. Give us a little rundown on everything that's going on. RAM usage, CPU temp, disk usage, device manager. We can go through, check for driver updates and everything like that. But the best part about this is from System Manager, select mode. We've got three different modes that we can use. And you could use a third-party app or even get into the BIOS and up this if you want to, but they've got this really tuned for this tablet. And each one of these does offer great performance depending on what you're doing with the tablet. Power save obviously is gonna be our lowest mode. 15 watt TDP. It's also gonna take the refresh rate from 165 down to 60 and turn the brightness down on the built-in screen to 40%. But we've got that 15 watt TDP. Not bad at all. This is what I've been using for browsing the web, watching 4K videos, and even playing indie games. Power balance, we'll take that up to a 22 watt TDP while plugged in, 18 on battery, 60 hertz refresh, and finally, premium power, 28 watts, keeping that at 165 hertz, and each one of these does change the fan profile, but even all out at 28 watts, I haven't seen this thing go over 81 degrees Celsius in extreme gaming test, which is really awesome for this thing. And they are using their in-house design cooling system for this. So we've got four copper tubes and a dual fan setup. We saw the vents on the back. It's gonna pull all the air in there, push it right up out the top. And if you're looking to get the best performance out of the V3, obviously you're gonna to wanna to go up to 28 watts. But it's pretty cool that that power balance on battery goes to 18 while plugged in. So we've kind of got a dock mode there. It goes up to 22. The next thing I wanted to show off was active pen support. And I'll tell you, this isn't gonna make you a better artist. Uh, I can't draw worth anything. Got the Menace Forum active pen, USB type C charging. We've got those two buttons on it. And I'm using Adobe Fresco. So just taking a look here, we can go with the wide line, just kind of right on the side there, put a little bit of pressure on it. Or if you wanna get that really thin line, just take it really easy. And I don't want to make anybody jealous because I'm such a good artist, but I did want to show off some of my drawing skills here. Got a, either a teddy bear slash pig bunny thing. Yeah, I think we'll go with a teddy bear slash pig bunny thing uh, slash human. A little bit of ears and we'll do a little sun over here. My fault. I kept hitting the menu up top. But yeah, active pin support working really well on the V3. And you know, if you're looking to become an artist like me, then this is kind of a must have product. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on the V3. When it comes to Geekbench 6, single core 2467, multi 11,027. Now it's time to check out some GPU benchmarks with 3 d Mark, And what I've noticed here with these Ryzen 8000 series APUs, as opposed to the 7000, so the 8840U versus the 7940U, Night Raid and Fire Strike scores are coming in a bit lower at the same kind of TDPs, but we're actually seeing a nice jump when it comes to Time Spy, because with this at 28 watts, 3,108. This is a great score for an iGPU, especially given that we're only at 28 watts. But now it's time to take a look at some PC gaming on this tablet. 
So first up, we've got Hades. I'm at 1200p and that's really all the settings we can change with this game here, but it is running at 165 hertz at a 15 watt TDP. Of course, you can run this game at around 10 watts, 60 FPS, but I really wanted to see if we could hit 165 FPS. And yeah, it's totally possible with a lot of the 2D or 2.5D indie games on the market right now. So we can really take advantage of this display. The next thing I wanted to test was an older game just to see if we could take that resolution up to 2560 by 1600. And with something like Dirt 3, which I completely understand is definitely an outdated game. I still have fun playing it, but that's just me. We're at 2560 by 1600, high settings, and we're getting an average of around 74 FPS. And keep in mind, we're only at a 15 watt TDP right now. We can run this at 1200p, high settings, 120 FPS at the same kind of wattage. Moving over to Fortnite, and I was actually really impressed by the performance here. I personally don't play Fortnite. If I was to get into a real match, I'd get headshot immediately. So I just went into one of the open maps on the front page. I don't even know what this is. 900p, it's actually 1440 by 900. Medium settings with none of the upscaling or super resolution options enabled. I completely disabled all of that. And we're seeing an average of around 74 FPS on this tablet at 18 watts. Next up, we've got Helldivers 2, and with this, I think it was user error, but I'm at 1080p, so you see the black bars on the top and bottom. I should have went to 1200p, but we're at low settings, FSR set to performance, 28 watts, and we're seeing an average of around 78 FPS, which is really great for a game like this. And yeah, 28 watts is going to kill our battery quite quickly, but I really wanted to run it like this to see the CPU temps. And with this game here at 28 watts, we only hit a maximum of 65 degrees Celsius. I've been going back to this since the show came out. I can't wait for the uh, new update to Fallout 4, but uh, this is basically OG Fallout 4 for PC. 1080p, medium settings, 28 watt TDP. Seeing some good performance, and I suspected we would. The game is, what, 8, 10 years old now? So yeah, we can definitely run this at 1080p. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. You can take the TDP up on this, run it at 28 watts, 1080p or 1200p low settings and see some really good frame rates. But I wanted to take it down a bit just to see if we could do 18 watts and it's not bad. We're actually seeing an average of around 71 FPS, 800p low settings at an 18 watt TDP. So far, really impressed with the performance the V3's putting out for PC gaming. But of course, one of the big questions here is gonna be battery life on this unit. We've got a 50.82 watt hour battery, and we've got three different performance profiles that we can use. For this first test, we're in power save mode. So it's a 60 Hertz display, 40% brightness on the screen, 15 watt TDP. First test here, some YouTube video playback. I've got the video at 1080p, hardware info is on screen, and total battery draw is anywhere between 7.4 watts up to 8.6 watts, kind of fluctuates in between there. So I let this run for a little while just to get the averages on this video playback. And I basically did the same with PC gaming because I think that's gonna be a big draw for a lot of people out there. I know there's handhelds and laptops on the market, but there are people who do want a tablet to game on and this thing can definitely do it. Cyberpunk 2077, 15 watt TDP. You can see our total battery draw on screen is anywhere between 27.4 up to 28.9. I've got hardware info in the back, which will give me the average by the end of this. Running these tests for about an hour each, video playback, gameplay, 15 watt, 18 watt, 28 watt. With all of the tests that I've done, we have a 60 hertz refresh rate, 40% screen brightness, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth on. Video playback and web browsing are something that people are going to be doing a lot on this, and all of that can be done in the 15 watt mode. 1080p video playback from YouTube. We're looking around 6 hours and 25 minutes of runtime out of this thing. Web browsing does pull a bit more. I averaged around 12.7 watts from the battery, looking at around 4 hours of runtime. And of course, when it comes to gaming, I did want to test in each mode. So at 15 watts, pulling around 28.4 watts from the battery. That's an hour and 45 minutes. Not bad, and there's a lot of stuff we can run on this at 15 watts. I've always considered 18 watts on these APUs a real nice sweet spot, and we can see around one hour and 35 minutes of runtime. And at 28 watts, you're gonna average around an hour of gameplay out of this thing, kind of full boat at that performance setting. 
And another thing to keep in mind is we've got 65 watt fast charging with this. We can go from zero to 100% in a little under 1.5 hours. Actually, one hour, 43 minutes is what I got out of this thing with a 65 watt PD charger that comes along with it. Personally, I'm really loving the new Menace Forum V3. It's definitely not going to be for everybody, but I'm really glad that we have that big, beautiful screen, especially with VRR. Having that really high refresh rate is great for video playback. Of course, we can run some indie games at 165 hertz on this, which was pretty impressive. And the cooling system they opted to use here with those four heat pipes and dual fans is actually really quiet, even at 28 watts. I was pretty surprised. Now, I've been gaming at around 18 watts across the board. But through all of my testing from 15, 18 up to 28, I had hardware info running in the back and the maximum temperature that the CPU hit was 79 degrees Celsius. Fan noise is minimal at 15 and even 18 watts, but taking it up to 28 does get a bit louder. It's not annoying in my opinion, doesn't have a whine or anything to it, actually sounds like a normal fan, and it's actually much quieter than a lot of the 7840U powered handhelds on the market right now. But overall, I think this is a great tablet. It is the best Windows-based tablet that I've ever tested over here. But one thing to keep in mind is a lot of the other tablets on the market use Intel, so we don't have that powerful RDNA 3i GPU like we do with this Ryzen 7 8840U. One thing I'd love to see in a future revision of this tablet is an integrated stand. Have it built into the back of the tablet so it folds out like those Surface tablets. But other than that, I mean, I think that Menace Forum has done a really good job given that this is their first Windows-based tablet to market. And all in all, it's the world's first Ryzen 8000 series powered Windows 11 tablet. I've got at least one more video coming up with the Menace Forum V3. I definitely want to test out an eGPU here because we have two USB 4 ports. They run at a 40 gig protocol, so adding an eGPU is pretty easy. And we could definitely up the gaming performance on this thing. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you hit that like button and think about subscribing to the channel so you know when I post the next one. But if you're interested in learning a little more or maybe picking up the Menace Forum V3, I'll leave some links to their official website down below. If you've got any questions or if there's anything else you want to see tested on this thing, just let me know in the comments. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. And like always, thanks for watching.